Okay, so the video for today is going to be Proactive Police Work Part 2. Uh, today's episode of Proactive Police Work is going to be focused around how um, police officers or law enforcement can shut down uh, dope houses or trap houses or houses where people are selling narcotics from in a uh, neighborhood. Uh, this is a popular topic and a popular question. I think I think pretty much everybody is on board with not having um, hardcore drugs being sold in their neighborhood. Um, it brings a lot of drug addicts and drug users to your neighborhood. Um, you have people for lack of a better term, uh, looking like zombies walking up and down the street. You have overdoses, you have uh, crack pipes and needles strewn about the place. Um, you know, people don't feel safe with their kids outside playing. Uh, it's just pretty obvious. Nobody wants a dope house on their street. So how do the police shut these things down? It's not as easy as just going out knowing, hey, that's a drug house, I'm gonna go inside. Uh, arrest everybody inside and take all the dope. We have what's called the Fourth Amendment in the United States. Fourth Amendment is what protects citizens from uh, warrantless searches on their house, uh, meaning that the police can't just say, hey, I know there's a criminal in there, I'm gonna go in, or I just, I know there's criminal activity at the house, I'm gonna go in. Um, this also pairs up nicely with um, this controversy, for lack of a better term, of um, arresting and prosecuting drug addicts. You know, um, there's a, a heavy push right now nationally um, and publicly to uh, stop the prosecution of people who are addicted to drugs. Um, the statement that's often said is addiction is an illness, it's not a crime. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I tend to agree to a large, I tend to agree to a large extent with that statement. Um, I don't really, I'm not, I'm, I'm not out there trying to punish drug addicts. Um, my goal is I don't get excited if I go out and I find a F5 bit of crack on somebody. I'm not looking for it. Um, but I can tell you that those arrests are very, very useful. And I can also tell you that oftentimes people arrested with small amounts of felony drugs such as um, crack cocaine, powder cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, methamphetamine, those people are often arrested but don't actually face jail time or get punished for that. There's a variety of reasons for that. One way that they can get out of that punishment is that they go to drug court where um, you know, if they meet certain criteria, that charge can go away. Another way that those charges can go away is, um, uh, for lack of a better term, we say that they get to work the charge off. So if a uh, patrol officer, such as myself, arrests somebody with a small amount of a felony drug, let's call it crack cocaine, um, they might get contacted by a member of our uh, narcotics bureau that uh, detective will work with that drug addict to shut down these major drug selling operations. So they will kind of coordinate with all of these people who have been arrested and let's say that there's a house on um, First Avenue and they want that house shut down. They'll go to all these people that they've networked with and they'll say, hey, are you familiar with anyone selling out of that house on First Avenue? Sorry, I'm sweating. I just left the gym. I don't know if it's showing up on this camera. Um, but, uh, you know, let's say they get a CI who is familiar with someone that's dealing out of the house on First Avenue. They will give them a certain amount of money, drop them off around the corner. That person will go into that house, buy a certain amount of drugs, bring the drugs and the exact change back to the detective, and the detective will document that. They'll do that... Um, I don't know how many times I have to do it, a couple of times. And then that will be enough to document that house as a drug selling house. And then you can get a warrant to hit that house. Now, 
something else that might happen is the people who are working as CIs might go into that house and they might say, um, you know, I saw Bones in there and I know that Bones also works with, I don't know, trying to make up fake gang names here, also works with Cartman. Um, and then the detectives can, can put together the whole South Park team and what they might do is wait until they have enough information to get warrants on a whole bunch of houses and those are kind of like a, a spider web at the center of that web is the guy who's supplying everybody so the police in your neighborhood might be aware of a dope house on your street um, they might have already gotten a buy out of it they might have enough information to go ahead and hit that house and shut it down and it might be frustrating for the citizens who live on that street that um, the house isn't being shut down. They call the police every single day, they see the police drive by and not doing anything, and then all of a sudden that house will get shut down and they'll say, oh, thank God, the, the cops finally did their freaking job, they finally shut down this dope house. Well, little do they know that that dope house, along with seven other dope houses, was shut down, as well as the guy who was supplying all those houses, as well as the uh, cartel contact who was supplying that guy um, so the day that one drug house gets shut down, there might be 30 or 40 people arrested on that same day. And the people on that street only know that one house was shut down. So I don't know if I rambled on too much. I don't know if that made sense to anybody, but, um, that is kind of the big picture of how a lot of street level proactive policing works. And the reason that it might seem that officers are out there harassing drug addicts. And if you're just a normal person walking down the street and you see officers grab someone who looks like they might be strung out, and you might think, oh, that's a, that's a victim. They're picking on somebody who doesn't need to be picked on. It's not his fault that he's a drug addict. Um, you might be unaware that there's a whole lot of other things happening in that, um, that string of custody, for lack of a better term. So there's a lot of street level proactive police work that goes into shutting down these major operations. And I can tell you a hundred percent that, um, the detectives and stuff up in these bureaus that are doing, um, wiretaps and I don't know, trash picking and all that stuff. They are not able to do their job if the patrol officers aren't arresting and making contact with these street level users. So that's another lesson about proactive police work. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.